support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Noble Hospital, a brand new name for a Westfield institution which is improving the health of our community every day with quality and compassion. Noble Hospital and Bay State Health, better together. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Friday mornings is something different on 89.5 FM. It's JP's Talk About Town. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Arts Beat Radio here on 89.5 FM WSKB. I'm Mark Auerbach, your host. We're broadcasting this morning from the campus of Westfield State University. Our first guest is Rob Ruggiero, who's the Artistic Director of Theatre Works in Hartford. And they've begun the new year with a, an interesting play, a big hit on Broadway called The Doll's House Part Two. Now, some of you that studied theater or literature may remember A Doll's House Part 1 which was a Henrik Ibsen classic of the late 19th century and it was a controversial play in its day because it was the story of a housewife and mother who lived in comfortable means in uh, Oslo in Norway and at the end of this show where she's questioning why she's not fulfilled living a great life with a good spouse and kids she picks up and she walks out of the house slams the door behind her well flash forward to 2017 and a sequel was written by not ipsen but a man named lucas nath uh, called a doll's house part two uh, it was a big hit on broadway American Theatre Magazine says it's one of the most produced plays around the country. And Rob Ruggiero is here to talk about it. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Well, I have to say really quickly, I love that you were playing music from Gypsy. <laughs> well, I did that. I, I I put that music in on purpose because I was going to backtrack and say that last summer you directed Gypsy at the Muni in St. Louis um, for, as part of their 100th season. I did, and not to sidetrack it, but again, I did this wonderful production with Tony winner Beth Level, who is now in the prom on Broadway. And uh, uh, she was amazing, and it was uh, it was a great. So you just you just warmed my heart this early morning. Um, and today today is our official opening night for Adult House Part Two. So I'm in, so you really kind of lifted my spirits in all kinds of ways. Well, <laughs> I can't wait to come down there tonight and see it um, and review oh, it. We're excited to have. I've you. been thinking about it all week, and. You know, I was thinking about sequels, Rob, and the fact that it, some playwrights r write sequels, but they plan them when they're writing. I mean, for example, Angels in America has two parts, but uh, Tony Kushner thought about that when he was writing the play. But to have a sequel to a play written a century later by a different playwright is kind of unique. And yeah. it has a lot, you know, um, in musical theater, when they write sequels, they tend to bomb, like Annie Part Two or... Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bring Back Birdie, which was the sequel to Bye Bye Birdie. And the oh, most baby. famous flop of all times is a musical called A Doll's Life, which 
opened uh, in the early 80s, and it was a mus- musicalization of what happened when Nora walks out of uh, the house in, in a doll's house and what she does <laughs> afterwards. Right. And just so you know that the end of the program today, I found a clip from the uh, original cast recording. So we're wow. gonna, I'm going to end today with um, a little clip from a doll's life. But it's one of those horrible flops that if everybody well, who said... Who would they make s- a musical out of a doll's house? Right. right. <laughs> Harold Prince, of all people. Um, oh. And if everybody who said that they saw it actually saw it, um, it probably would run for 10 years. So, <laughs> Well, you know what I want to say about this? It's a very good point. But you know, this, it, it is technically a sequel because if you define a sequel as the story, you know, the, the, the plot and the story and the characters are the same and it's 15 years after she walks out that door. But I will, with this, what I love about this play, um, and I, I've been saying, you know, last, when it was on Broadway a season ago, um, one of my friends who was a Tony voter like invited me to go see it. And I was like, it's all house part two. And, you know, it doesn't really feel like theater work. And I don't know if I want to see a Dolls House Part 2, and, but I went, and that was like one of my favorite experiences of that season. And because, here's the thing, is the sequel is like the, the idea, that, the springboard idea. But it's really, even though they're in period clothes and period hair, I mean, the, the play has such a contemporary voice. I mean, it has an irreverent voice, a contemporary voice, and both in what it's trying to say and how how they say it. So I think that makes this like like much more than a sequel. It's really a different playwright because it's a contemporary play housed in a period, and yet the interactions, the the the, the wonderful writing and text of it has a real contemporary edge to it, and that's what makes it. Very theater work. Now, I understand that a lot of people have said you don't have to know a doll's house or have seen a doll's house to appreciate the sequel because um, it, it's really a starting point. But I, Theater Works is going to do a staged reading of a doll's house during the run of a doll's house part two. Yeah, we're going to do, we're doing it kind of that we call it the clip notes version. But because, you know, we've been doing, you know, you really. Uh, do not know, need to know the story. I, in a, you know, I taught it in text analysis class, and I remember when I saw the Broadway production, I just was like, oh, I just popped my phone and threw Wikipedia up to, like, just remind me of the plot point, because I thought, oh, I really, I should remind myself. And, and you know what? You don't need to know, because it's not, again, it's not really the essential purpose of the play, and anything that is referred to, you can, you can comprehend within the context of the current play. However, we thought it was fun um, to, you know, take an opportunity to bring a couple of theater works actors, you know, back in. And, and it was a great engagement activity for those who were interested, you know, um, to kind of experience um, a doll's house um, in you know while this is running you know i had an original idea of um uh and i they just you know they had other things already planned but when i was doing this i actually approached her for stage and said hey why don't you do a doll's house and we'll do a doll's house part two and we could do this kind of fun kind of communal ticket um but uh, uh, it just didn't work out because they had they had this wonderful production there now, but they had other, you know too many other things already slotted. But isn't that a cool idea? I think it'd be an incredible idea. You know, um, I, I know that it, it's something that more there should there needs to be more collaboration where people get the experience of two theaters uh, doing something like that. But you guys, um, the theater community is really tight, and Jen Thompson, who's directly Directing um, a Doll's House Part Two, she directs at good speed, and uh, your set designer for this is the set designer for the show at Hartford Stage. So yeah. it, it seems like it's a big community uh, event. We have a wonderful relationship with you know uh, 
with with the other theaters around and also in New Haven and got a good speed of course for me. And yes, it's a very small theater community and interesting, very interesting. Jen has directed at Hartford Stage and Good Speed. Alexander Dodge, the set designer, we, is his first show with us, but he's done many shows for Darko at Hartford Stage and on Broadway. We ended up with this really um, awesome Broadway like design team. There's Alexander Dodge for the set. Alejo Vietti is doing the clothes, and he and I have done like like a, a lot of, of shows together all over the country, and he's been at Theater Works a lot, and he has beautiful on Broadway right now. He has had a few Broadway shows. And Philip Rosenberg, you know, did The Elephant Man on Broadway. He's done a couple of shows for us now as a lighting designer. And, you know, I love Jen. Jen and I are friends. Uh, she reminded me last night before, um, before the show that I was one of the people who, like, was advocating her to direct when she was just breaking into directing, and I had forgotten that. But, uh, you know, I, I love her work. I love her as a person. I love her integrity. So, like, she, and she had the chance to direct a Doll's House Part Two anywhere. She did, like, a couple of big theaters that wanted her, like, you know, at the scale of Harvard Stage, that, you know, in terms of their budgets and fees and all that, that wanted her to do it. And she chose us. She, she wanted to do this show in our wonderful intimate space and she knew she could be more adventurous and have a wonderful, you know, some wonderful support here. So we're lucky and it's, it's you'll see uh, tonight that the, the design is, is very adventurous. Now, this is the last show that you're doing in your current space before uh, you begin some rather ambitious renovations. Oh my God. Yes, I know it's like so exciting and terrifying because the scope you know uh, has we're keeping it under control but it has expanded now to this 5.5 million dollar renovation and for us you know you've known us for a long time i mean and we're really trying to not uh, do a lot of frosting we're trying to really do things that will have profound impact to both the audience experience the actor experience the artist experience, you know, and the uh, things that will sustain the building. Because many of the systems are from 1927 or like the 60s or 70s. So uh, the, the, that's, that's, you know, trying to do those is very ambitious. But basically, we're doing, you know, building wide new um, HVAC, heat and air conditioning, because many of the spaces, like, they're dead right now. It's, and, um, and fire safety and all that, new electrical. And then we're doing, uh, you know, a fabulous new, more open communal uh, lobby. We're, gonna, we're trying to call it like Hartford's living room. You know, we're trying to make something really cool there where it's a space not only as a lobby for our shows, but a place for events and a place for people to hang out. Um, and then... In the theater itself, you know, the, 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 there's a new bathroom. The audience shares these small, dated bathrooms with the actors still. I mean, there's all these odd things, but, you know, new, new comfortable seats, a, a new a dedicated elevator that goes from this new lobby to the theater. Everything was about what we needed, um, moving the, the, the booth, the technical booth, because right now the stage manager can't see the whole show from where she's sitting. And, but the one thing we, we were clear about is that it, it will feel better, but it will not lose its, its intimacy and its, its current feeling should only get better and not feel drastically different in terms of like the seating configuration stays the same. It's just going to feel cozier and more intimate and, and more comfortable. I, I have always enjoyed going to the theater there because it feels like, even if you're sitting in the last row, that uh, the people are like just a couple of feet away on the stage. Yeah. And back in December, we had a great opportunity to come down and do a two-hour radio special with the great people in Christmas on the Rock. Christmas on the Rock. It was, that was just that awesome. It was an awesome, a, a thrilling experience. And uh, for me, one of the, I think one of the radio memories I'll never forget. But sitting on the stage um, of this bar uh, for Christmas on the Rocks and talking with the cast, I'd look out into the house and realize that the last row of seats was so close 
Um, it's not like being uh, on the stage of the Bushnell or even Hartford stage. No. And that the intimacy. The row is eight rows, eight rows. That's it. The, cool, right? Oh, totally cool. And um, it just, you know, it's stuck in my mind that um, how lucky people are when they go to theater works to be able to participate in a theater experience that's almost in their laps. Mm. It's what makes it so funny. It's what, it's what makes uh, the space, you know, very, very special. And it's a combination of the eight rows, the distance to the playing space, and the fact that we're a modified thrust. You know, it's those three sections that kind of make a semicircle. And so you, I always keep saying it feels like the audience is like hugging the play. It's very, it's, you, you really feel kind of in the room with the actors. And I, and, I, and I think that's what really is the number one thing, besides I hope the quality of the work that we do that that defines us and, and is a, you know makes us uh, I mean who we are and I'm so proud of that. Yeah. So after a doll's house part two, the renovations start and the remainder of your season moves to the Wadsworth Athenaeum's theater mm-hmm. in Hartford. When do you think you'll come back to Pearl Street? Ah, the big question. Well, the plan is absolutely to be able to start. Um, our our homecoming season in um, in October. So, so it's in, really like normally our first show of a season opens in October and ends the end of August. That's we go year round pretty much. So the plan, the hope is you know is that we uh, is it, it, it has to. I told the I told the architects and the so that means it's not a choice. <laughs> and we're really trying to get all our ducks in a row. And there's a lot to do in, you know, and we have this like six months of renovation and then we have to move back in don't forget, and load in the set and all that. So it's going to be tight, but, you know, we're adventurous, right? You totally. And after A Doll's House Part 2, what, what are the shows on the rest of the season? Well, and we're going over our friends at the Wadsworth, you know, I've, have, uh, we have a wonderful partnership there. So we're over there. We're doing um, Matthew Sweet and um, Todd Allman's musical Girlfriend, which is a fabulous little discovery, having a bunch of little pop-up productions around the country. It's, a two, it's two actors, and it's a 90s rock musical. It is so much fun and nostalgic in a way, but, uh, but also of really of now. And then we're doing um, Actually, the play Actually, um, by um, Anna Ziegler. And uh, my producing associate, Tanisha Dugan, is directing that. And then we're ending over there in the summer. We wanted to just end with a lot of fun, and we're doing Fully Committed. Um, and Connecticut native Bill Fenley is directing that. And um, Jameson Cern, who was the, the, the leading lady... He was the leading lady of Georgia McBride, um, is, uh, is coming back to do, you know, uh, to play this role of this actor who has, like, you know, mo- you need a really a comic uh, a genius to do this thing. He's probably going to freak out when I use that word, but he's so amazingly talented, and he plays, you know, dozens of roles. And, it's, and this, show, this is a show about um, the chaos of, of restaurant reservations. And it actually is not a new play, but they recently uh, revised it, you know, to be up to date for Jesse Tyler Ferguson. So, well, I it, we thought it was a really fun way to end the journey out of uh, off our site, and then we're going to come back. So. Well, we got to take we got to take a quick break to acknowledge our underwriters. But before we do, um, why don't you give people the website that they can go to while we're acknowledging underwriters to look up all the good stuff about theater works? Sure, it's uh, twhartford.org. Very easy, twhartford.org, and that's our our show stuff. And we have a special website. T-W-R-E-N-O, R-E-N-O dot org for people who are interested in, in a, uh, looking about the renovation and we're going to keep it updated as we start. Okay, we're talking with, with photos and stuff. 
We're talking with Rob Ruggiero from TheaterWorks here on Artsbeat Radio this morning. I'm Mark Auerbach. Our engineer is Peter Coles. We're at 89.5 FM WSKB. We're broadcasting this morning from the campus of Westfield State University. And we'd like to acknowledge the underwriters that make community radio programming possible here. And we'll be right back. Underwriting for community radio is provided by the YMCA of Greater Westfield. Every day, the YMCA strengthens the community through programs and services focused on youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. For all the Y's many programs and services, visit us on the web at www.westfieldymca.org. The YMCA, 67 Court Street in downtown Westfield. We're more than a gym. We're a cause. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings from 6 till 8, it's Tina Gorman with Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Welcome back, everyone. This is Arts Beat Radio. I'm Mark Auerbach here on 89.5 FM WSKB. We're chatting with Rob Ruggiero from TheaterWorks. On the second half of the program, we're going to meet Paul Dennis from the University of Massachusetts dance program, where tonight there is a major uh, celebration of the works of the famous Jose Limon, and uh, the UMass dancers are uh, performing some of Limon's work with some of Limon's uh, dance company people. And next week here on Arts Beat Radio, Kevin Rhodes, the maestro of the Springfield Symphony, is back from Europe and he'll chat about an upcoming Springfield Symphony concert that profiles the work of women composers past and present. We'll also meet Alan Burroughs, who is the artistic director of Shakespeare and Company in Lenox, and they'll talk about some of the plays of the Bard that are coming to the Berkshires this summer. So, Rob, um, you hey. you kind of have like a little break from directing right now to um, plan all these renovations and stuff, but um, I know every summer you run off and do a show here and there. Are you going to have a chance this year to go back to St. Louis in the Muni? I am. Did you did you I got did you know or are you asking for <laughs> Well I sort of knew I'm but going, I, I wanted you to spill uh, the beans. I'm going back for the hundred and one season and this is like this is their post renovation season. They're actually in the middle and there are a few phases, but they're in, they're doing a one hundred million dollar renovation that, that kicked off with their hundredth season. So now we're going back at 101, and theirs is all about, they kind of took their stage and the surround, like, down, and they're adding an orchestra pit and room and all this crazy stuff. But I'm going back. Yes, I, I'm limiting my time away with the renovation. So I'm doing, I am directing The Girlfriend, the, the production of Girlfriend, at, uh, at our production of Girlfriend at um, the Wadsworth. And then I'm going off in June to do uh, 1776. That's the movie. 1776, not the sequel, uh, but the original. The original, yeah. I'm teasing you. Yeah, yeah. I'm teasing you. <laughs> um, are you. And you used to do Goodspeed almost every year. Are you taking a breather from Goodspeed this year? Um, well, I didn't choose to take a breather. Uh, I, You know, there just wasn't a project that... Um, that was available, or you know, for me, uh, um, and that that happens. You know, I don't ever believe me. And we're talking right now about something for for next season. But um, I, it's it's a place that I love. I've done eleven shows there now, and um, and you know, with three slots, they they you know they have to spread that wealth around. So I certainly was was disappointed not to go back, but but I totally get it. I mean. We have three great shows coming in with three great directors, and you got you got to shake it up sometimes. So, yeah, um, I look forward to my return soon. I hope. So, will you be spending a lot of time uh, in be- in between what you're directing here and going to the Muni? Will you be spending a lot of day to day time supervising this renovation, or are other people going to be doing that? 
Oh no, we have we have an owner's rep. You know, the staff's very engaged, and of course, you know. But you have to be just like a house renovation. I will be around, keeping my eyes on things because you know I'm very specific, especially about when we get to finishes and some of those details. I have strong points of view and have taken great care in picking things out. And the staff's probably laughing who are listening to this right now. So there's that. But mostly, what I'm around is you know. We're still raising dollars, and you know we're doing great. We have we have uh, about four of the five point five right now. So I will be out pounding that pavement between now and the fall. You know, raising that last million and a half. So. And you've turned theater works into more than just a theater. Uh, I know that there are music events going, and that you're sponsoring uh, kind of like downtown gatherings and and stuff. And uh, every time I go to the website or get a newsletter or something, there's a new event happening. Um, I, I, I and you've got it seems a younger crowd that's showing up for all of these events. Well, we, you know, we have like a lot of theaters, you know, taking, giving a lot of effort and a lot of thought in how to engage the the future audience, as we say, but also what I'm most proud about, and this has a lot, everything to do with the amazing staff I have, but we are, we put a lot of focus and I think it's been noticed into community engagement as a pathway to, you know, building that future audience. So things like District Night which was an idea that I was like, ah, you know, like two of two young people on my staff came up with, um, Tanisha and Michael McKinnon, who you know, have been like taking the charge on that. And that has really taken off and it's become this kind of, you know, this neighborhood block party. And people are talking about it and the, the amount of people going to it has blossomed. And we really, we really try and do, like you talked about the adult, adult house reading, and and Lady Bunny is coming a week from Sunday. Barbara Merman will be back. We want to do more music. We really want, you know, to put an effort besides the core mission of creating great theater. We Engagement is, like, something that excites us and is really what needs to happen um, in, the, in, the, in the world of theater. And we're excited. We're, we're excited. Our, our only obstacle right now is that we do so much of our time in our space is used up for shows we don't have the capacity in that space to to do a lot more so we're just kind of opening up like that district party is like out on the street now you know it's it's funny that like 10 years ago or 15 years ago theater works was a small steady theater operation and Hartford stage. But now the two of you are really the big guns in drawing people to Hartford aside from the Broadway. Um, Do you, do are are the younger audiences and the, and the people moving into the, the capital region and folks from up here in Western mass, are they becoming more and more involved? Um, Sure. Yeah. And we're excited about all the new houses coming in and we're very, you know, we started off as a, as the underdog, you know, basement theater. We were a, a little theater who kind of, you know, made our mark that way and established a, you know, a solid, very dedicated audience space. And we have evolved, and you know, I'm so proud to be, have been a part of that to a very successful mid-sized theater. I always say we're a people who understand this. We're like high quality off Broadway to Hartford's Broadway. You know, and in the Bushnell brings in those, you know, the fabulous big musicals like the recent Hamilton. So we all, the, between the three of us, we, there's a beautiful balance that I think really makes downtown Hartford special. And um, uh, Amelia, the, up the incoming artistic director at Hartford Stage, I had the, the kind of wonderful surprise of when she was interviewing, she asked, to meet with me, and so we had dinner. So cool. um, we, yes, and it was really wasn't that wonderful of her. She said when she was interviewing, she just wanted to get a temperature on downtown Hartford and this other theater, and so we we hit it off like immediately. So we're already like you know we're we're going to get together and we're gonna uh, we're looking forward to partnership opportunities and really supporting each other. You know, in a way, we, we both believe that each other's success is 
only benefit each other. You know, we're not, uh, and I love that about her. She's very warm, a great choice, and she's really excited to uh, partner with us. I think it's going to be fantastic. Rob, we're out of time, but just to let everybody oh. know that <laughs> A Doll's House Part 2 has its official opening night tonight at Theater Works, and you can find more information about this season at tworkshartford.org and uh, twhartford.org and you can find my review of A Doll's House Part 2 running in the Westfield News either this weekend or early next week. We're going to take another break. We'll be back with Paul Dennis from the UMass Dancers. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. Talk for a couple of minutes. Welcome back, everyone. This is Arts Beat Radio. I'm Mark Auerbach. We're here at 89.5 FM, WSKB, uh, broadcasting this morning from the campus of Westfield State University. Uh, Peter Coles is our chief engineer. We are trying to get Paul Dennis on the line at this time. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, um, A Doll's House Part 2, is, as you know, is at Theater Works. Uh, down the street at Hartford Stage is the Engagement Party. It's a world premiere by Samuel Baum. It's a thriller. Saw it last weekend, and I, I, friends that have gone, we've been talking about it ever since. Um, it's... Uh, starts out as a comedy. Uh, two people are getting engaged. They've invited a bunch of their college friends and the uh, in, uh, fiance's parents attend. And it starts out and it could have been a drawing room comedy like a Noel Coward play. And it, things get very dark and very thrilling in a matter of minutes when somebody spills a glass of wine and then the play turns into a lot of twists and a lot of turns. I don't want to give any of it away, except that for 80 minutes, you're sitting at the edge of your seat wondering who done it. And then you want to talk about it afterwards. And yesterday I was talking with a couple of colleagues of mine and um, they had seen the play after I did. And they were wondering what happened or what we all thought happened to the characters in the engagement party after uh, the play ended. Uh, would the wedding go forward? Would the people patch up any of their differences and all of that? But it's an exciting play, and at, that's at Hartford Stage. And opening next week at the Bushnell in Hartford is Cats. And one of the things that you might want to go down to see in Cats is the Westfield actor Nick Burridge, who is starring in the uh, tour. And he is playing six different parts as a standby. So nobody has any idea whether uh, Nick is going to be on or off at any given time. So we've been unable, Peter, to... I tried both numbers and one went directly to voicemail. That means the phone's probably not on. And the other one went to voicemail after a suburban number of rings and there's nobody in the office. Well... Those things. Maybe we should call. We should call Rob back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should. Maybe we should. You know, I couldn't help but think, Peter, um, when we were talking with Rob, how great it was to go down there and do that show. It was a lot of fun, and and the the thing is, the all the staff down there is incredibly nice. You know, it's, I've been to theater houses in my past where. They're, they're, they tolerate you, you know what I mean? In the media, they tolerate you. And this, they're welcoming and nice, and they're, 
you know, hey, what do you need? Where do you want to do this? And, hey, I got an idea for this. If the, the camera might go better here or, you know, uh, put your table right there. That's perfect. And we'll set you up over here. And, and you know, it's they know their space incredibly well, every inch of it. And they're very proud of it. You know, I first started going to theater works and covering their shows. Maybe, oh, in my first go round as an arts reporter, and theater works was just getting off the ground. And over the years, I've gotten to know Rob and Eric Ort, who's one of the directors there. Mm -hmm. Eric's been on the program many times. And Michael McKiernan, uh, who is one of their marketing people, who is producing a lot of these music events that they're having and I love going to theater works I just it doesn't matter whether it's a new play or uh, the occasional musical that they mm -hmm. do every time you go there um, you're hearing a different voice speaking you're hearing playwrights that you're not necessarily seeing or hearing in other theaters that really have something to say and not last season but the season before, there was a play at Theatre Works called Sunset Baby by a, a playwright, Dominique Morisseau, okay. who really was pretty much unknown. And she wrote this riveting play about a daughter who confronts her father. Um, it, the language was rough. It was raw. It was intense. Is it not what you were expecting? Totally not what I was expecting. But I thought, wow, this playwright has something to say and it turned out over the last two years Dominique Morso's works have been done in theaters all over the country and she won a MacArthur a genius award um, wow, okay. you know one of those and um, Hartford Stage is doing her play Detroit 67 after the engagement party and Dominique Morso is going to make her Broadway debut as a playwright this spring uh, and she wrote the book to a musical about the Temptations. Oh, that sounds like fun. Which really sounds cool. Yeah, and that the fact like fun. that you got to see Dominique Morisot's work done at Theater Works before mm -hmm. her name was really. Oh, and it probably helped around. to launch her career. You know, I, I seem to I'm, I'm getting the drift um, by by hanging out with you and, and going to do these events at, at different locations that. This is almost like a farm system. Hartford, the Berkshires are like a farm system for, for Broadway. And, you know, the, in sports, you have farm teams and things like that. And this is like a farm system. So people from New York come out here, get sent down to the miners, if you will, for a little while. But they don't consider it that. They consider it an, another place to work. And they actually probably enjoy the more intimate settings once in a while than these big, huge stages. And then they go back to New York and say, hey, um, I, know, I know I went out here to do this play. But they're doing this play over there, and this thing kicks butt. And it and now the talking back and forth happens. That's where you're seeing stuff going from the Berkshires and Hartford into New York City. Well, yeah, I mean Hartford Stage is known for sending theater to New York um, with Darko Tresnik, who's their outgoing artistic director. Anastasia is a big hit on Broadway, and that and that was a revival, right? That no, that originated brand new musical originated okay. in Hartford Stage, and a season before, a uh, Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder originated in Hartford and went to Broadway, won the. Tony Award, and they end their season this year with a brand new musical uh, based on the movie The Flamingo Kid. Do you remember that movie? Mm, vaguely. I know the title. I don't yeah. remember the movie. Um, and the, it's written by the the people that wrote the musical Grey Gardens, which was a big hit in New York. Okay. And I'm, all eyes are going to be on Hartford stage and at the end of May to see whether the Flamingo Kid will be next year's hit musical in New York. La, to, not last summer, but the summer before in Pittsfield, uh, Barrington Stage Company did American Sun, which was a uh, really um, biting play about racism. I mean, it had you at the edge of your seat and uh, squirming and uncomfortable at this particular theatrical situation. Yep. And it went to Broadway with Kerry Washington this year. It just closed. I think it closes this weekend. 
and Netflix has picked it up and they're going to film it to be streamed um, with the Broadway company, which is Kerry Washington and Stephen Pasquale and Jeremy Jordan. And it's directed by Kenny Leon, who directed Children of a Lesser God at Berkshire Theater, Theater Group, Group yeah. which moved to Broadway. I've noticed, too, that the, the digital services are really starting to pick up on Broadway shows and kind of not only preserving them kind of as a moment in time, but actually having a market for them as well. People are asking for those kind of things. They are. And there are a couple of um, streaming services that uh, carry Broadway shows. And of course, the front runner is public television, PBS, and live from Lincoln Center, sure. and great performances that carry a lot of Broadway musicals. And, uh, for example, um, Irving Berlin's Holiday Inn, that started at Goodspeed Musicals. Mm-hmm. And if you go to YouTube now, you can find a lot of them. There are streaming channels that uh, there's, I think, one called Broadway HD that you can just go sit and watch on your computer or stream to a television or something like I, that. I mean, I've noticed that it doesn't do justice to actually being in the theater, but for people who can't get there or maybe who can't afford to get there, um, it is a good it is a good secondary thing just to have the exposure to musical theater. Well, you th- uh, somebody said uh, one of the guests we had. I want to think it was Nick Burridge, um, who grew up in Westfield, Mm -hmm. said that he got a chance to see these shows on television, on on public TV, that he wouldn't have gotten to see in any other way. And we're very lucky here because we can be in New York in three hours. Yep. Yeah, um, to go see and a we Broadway also show. have quality stuff in Hartford and Hartford, on the Berkshires during the season. The Summer Berkshires, season. Boston, mm-hmm. Worcester has a theater called the Hanover now, oh, yeah, which yeah, produces yeah. Broadway. So it's around. But for a lot of people, if you live in the Midwest somewhere in, or in a flyover state, you're not going to get to see Hamilton for another couple of years. Right. Um, but you can see things like Holiday Inn or American Sun or some of these other shows. Mm-hmm. You can see them on your television set. And for a lot of people, that's their introduction to theater. Well, and, and like and, and, I, and I credit Fox to, uh, Fox Television Network. For doing the, the rent's going to be on this weekend, I believe. Yeah, and and rent's actually coming to the Bushnell. It's hard to believe, but I think it's like the twentieth anniversary. I know it's I you that. know it's been around a while, and uh, it, rent is coming. You know, the, and the Bushnell has other shows coming. Uh, Beautiful, which is just the music of Carol King, mm-hmm. is coming back to the Bushnell, and they've got the musical uh, Waitress coming, and they've uh, Cats. And and the sound of music is coming in the spring. So they and have a loaded schedule then. Totally loaded. That, know, that's a heavy hitter schedule for the Bushnell, for Broadway at Bushnell. And and they're doing more and more stuff. And yeah, there's the big shows there like Hamilton. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised, for example, if next year um, there's a, a big hit on Broadway now that won the Tony Award called The Band's Visit. And it's starting to tour. And I wouldn't be surprised. I've heard you talk about that. Is that a World War I or no, World it's War based on a it's based on a movie um, about... An Israeli or Egyptian uh, band that wanders into an Israeli town. Okay, yep. And it was an obscure little movie. Became a, the, the the composer of the musical wrote the music to the Full Monty. Okay. And uh, it was a big hit on Broadway. It started out oddly enough in a developmental workshop years ago at Hartford Stage. No and, uh, you know, they do readings of new mm-hmm. works, and sometimes they do them for the public. Sometimes they do them just for an invited audience. And the band's visit actually started in Hartford. And it made its rounds to, and got rewritten and revised and Reworked, moved yeah. and, and all that. And then it went off Broadway. And it was a big hit, and it moved on Broadway. And now... It won the Tony Award for Best Musical, and it's about to embark on a national tour. I wouldn't be surprised if that comes to the Bushnell. And, and would, so would that be something where Hartford Stage could, could ask to have something like that back instead of the Bushnell? Well, it, it, it's Because funny. of the heritage of it? It's funny. They did A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder mm-hmm. at Hartford Stage, and then it went to um, Broadway. Yep. Big hit. Um it had no stars in it. Uh, it wasn't like 
Angela Lansbury in or right, yeah, sure. you know Carol Channing in kind of thing. But it became a big hit on Broadway and it went out on a national tour and it played the Bushnell, which is a theater twice the size, if not three times the size of Hartford Stage. But the audience was there for that. And I suspect that if on well, Anastasia is on tour. It just opened its tour last fall. Okay. But I wouldn't be surprised if Anastasia comes back to town, but it'll play the Bushnell. Because it's a bigger show now. It's not that it's bigger, but they can get in over the course of a week. I guess there are at least 2,000 seats in the Bushnell. Yeah, it's and a if big you house. do the math and they do eight shows a week at the Bushnell, um, Hartford Stage has 500 seats. So yeah. they can cram a lot more people into a theater to see a show in a lot less time. I just think of, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a nostalgia guy. So, I, you know, I would think that something like that would make sense. But, you know, what do I know? Yeah. I'm not an economics guy. Never have been. <laughs> well, you know, they say they say theater is good for business. And if you talk to any of the theater companies around, um, they are responsible in a large part for boosting the activity downtown yep. where they're located yep. uh, or the town where they're located. Uh, Lenox, Massachusetts is really a hole in the wall, but. Tanglewood and Shakespeare and company bring thousands of tourists there every summer. Right. And Stockbridge yeah. with the Berkshire Theater Group's two theaters and Pittsfield yep. with Barrington Stage and the Colonial. Honestly, Pittsfield's become a uh I've just gotten a renaissance because of those, uh, mainly because of those two theaters and the community buying into those two theaters because you have a mix of locals and you have a mix of people coming in. I noticed that when I went to a Christmas carol up there, you know, the, the, the theater on a, what was it, like a Friday night in Pittsfield was nearly full. And you know what? That's a testament to the fact that the, the, the Berkshire Theater Group and, and Berkshire Stage and all those are, are, are right there and they're there and people recognize that they're a valued asset. Well, like going into Hartford, uh, last Friday night we went in to see the engagement party at Hartford Stage, and uh, Doll's House Part Two was in previews at um, Theater Works. At Theater Works, mm -hmm. and there was something at the Bushnell. I'm not sure what it was. Mm -hmm. um, they have two theaters yep. uh, that are going all the time, and there was something else. The streets of Hartford were packed. Yep. Parking garages were full. Restaurants appeared to have lines in front of them, mm -hmm. and there's a lot going on. And I mean, certainly the hope in Springfield that. If the casino brings in more entertainment, and they've had Stevie Wonder, they've had comedy nights at Symphony Hall, and I guess Cher is coming uh, yeah. this spring. And they've also opened up the Armory as a small venue yeah. as well. And uh, it, they will at some point very soon resolve who's going to manage Springfield Symphony Hall and whether City Stage will shutter or be reopened. It's certainly possible that uh, the arts could be a renaissance for downtown Springfield. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that the casino really is. The casino is a renaissance for the south end of Springfield, and people are well, the flocking down to go and, and check it out. But in the long run... Um, there's that whole section of Springfield from State and Maine up to uh, the train station that could be revitalized by the arts. And that's a corridor that really needs needs the work. No, I agree with you that the casino is not the end all be all, but it has become a little bit of a draw. And if they can if they can bring in big names, we've we've seen you know we haven't had concerts here at the Civic Center, music concerts. In 20, 30 years. I mean, since I was in high school. Yeah. The Civic Center was originally replaced by the Mullins Center. And then when both Connecticut casinos opened up, they replaced everything, including Hartford Civic Center. You know, Springfield Civic Center was no longer a tour stop. And then the Mullins Center was no longer a tour stop. It just, it just went to the casinos and that was it. So I've seen things change drastically around here in, in the past 30 years. Yeah, and Holyoke is trying to get the Victory Theater uh, renovated yeah, and off that, the yep. ground. And uh, certainly uh, there's theater spaces in North Adams with Mass Mocha up there. And uh, you, But, you know, you look at a town like East Haddam, Connecticut. It's a pretty little town with nothing really going for it uh, business-wise or industry-wise, and the Goodspeed musicals are there. And Goodspeed 
keeps that town alive. And every time you go down there in the summer and there's a performance at good speed, there's a whole bunch of little restaurants a and cottage cafes. industry. Yeah, and bed and breakfasts, and people can sail their boats and, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Park your boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a word, Dock your boat. Dock your boat. Yes. Um, <laughs> along the Connecticut River. And good speed is revitalized a whole area there. Or you go in the summertime down to the Nutmeg Summer Series at Uni- uh, University of Connecticut yeah, stores. And UConn, because of that and, and the Puppet Museum and the Art Museum, stores can Connecticut is jumping with activity. and uh, It's not a sleepy college town anymore. No. And, uh, I mean, Northampton's always been known as an arts town, and Greenfield's got some stuff going. So it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Well, yeah. Northampton's known for the Calvin and the Iron Horse, but the Calvin has become more of a music venue more so than, than, than plays and theater and stuff like that. And the Calvin never really was, it was a movie house, and when it was turned into a live theater, I mean, they had the occasional dance event there, but the Academy of Music That's was true, yeah. That, a theater is coming there, and they've got an ambitious uh, series of programs and stuff like that. And Northampton has the art galleries and the small venues and the Iron Horse and, and all, and that's really, really good for um, the economy. You want to take a break? Yeah, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back. um, We'll chat a little more, and then we're going to end the program today with a segment of music from a musical flop, a very historic one. Uh, It's called A Doll's Life, and it was a sequel to A Doll's House. So sort of um, different than A Doll's House Part 2. But we'll be right back. This is Arts Beat Radio. WSKB's community radio programming is brought to you in part by Dunkin' Donuts, providing new handcrafted espresso drinks and all-day breakfast sandwiches. There's more to love with DD Perks, a loyalty program that's loyal to you. On the web at DunkinDonuts.com and at several locations throughout Westfield, including the Ely Campus Center. Underwriting for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. For more information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield. Great futures start here. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. We're back at Arts Beat Radio, and we have Paul Dennis on the phone from UMass Dancers. Paul, sorry about that, but we got voicemail when we tried to call you. No kidding. Sorry about that. Now we were sitting down right here. Not a problem anyway. You got me. Okay, well, we've got a couple of minutes here, so we should probably talk about this major dance event at UMass this weekend. Um, yeah, this evening. This evening. Yeah. And um, when you you had experience with the Limon Company, and yeah. when people talk about Jose Limon, famous modern dancer, uh, e- equated on the level of Martha Graham, Doris Humphreys, mm. and uh, Paul, Paul Taylor, and yeah, the yeah. modern dance movement in this country. Yeah. What is this program tonight, and how are the members of the Limone Company working with the UMass dancers? Oh, that's great. So the, um, the program this evening is entitled uh, Reflect, Respond, and it's a collaboration of three entities. One is um, our dancers here at UMass Dance, the second is the Limon Company itself, and the third is David Dorfman. Uh, what we envisioned was where the students get to study and perform a piece of classic modern dance technique and repertory, and that's the Limon work. And um, what we did was we... Uh, companies, and to get an opportunity to see this kind of choreography done here in our neighborhood is really a once-in-a-lifetime... Two of their company members are performing a uh, work called The Exiles, which is a fantastic duet of classic modern dance. It's great. 
terrific. Paul Dennis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We're, Pleasure to speak with you. We're ending Arts Beat Radio today with a piece of music from the 1982 uh, short live musical, A Doll's Life. Larry Grossman wrote the music. Comden and Green wrote the lyrics. And it was a musicalization of what happened to Nora in A Doll's House after she left. Um, this is a song called Learn to Be Lonely. And we'll be back next week with another edition of Arts Beat Radio. Radio and Maestro Kevin Rhodes. Uh, Peter Coles is our chief engineer. I'm Mark Auerbach. We've been broadcasting live from the campus of Westfield State University. You can call Little Sparrow, Little Skylark, Little Starling. Now you've worked your way up from Little Goose at last. Little Goose is right. Look at you. You haven't done what you've set out to do. You try to build a new life around another man. the past make a new start like a new chick scratching fighting cracking out of its egg shake your wet feathers dry straighten that lovely leg a solitary stance or a solitary dance and learn to be lonely make a new life like a new star twinkling sparkling burning glad to be born Like a new sun, whirling, spinning, rolling free through the skies. Like a lone butterfly, open your wings and rise. Worse than being on your own is to mate and feel alone. You Be long.